Rekordbox has got hundreds of settings, but some of the defaults make no sense. And sometimes they can actually ruin your entire set. I'm going to show you the 10 settings I always change. One of the best things about being a DJ isn't playing music, it's smashing the cue button over and over. Well, what if you could bring all the fun of hitting the cue button to your hot cues as well? By default, when you press the hot cue button, the track will automatically start playing from that point. This will happen even if the track's paused when you press it, and it's also how CDJs work by default. But I like to change this to make the hot cues work more like the main cue button. Head into Preferences, go to Controller, scroll down until you see Hot Cue, and then check this option during pause, Gate Playback is applied. Taking your finger off the pad will stop playback and return the playhead back to the hot cue. One use for this is when you want to quickly drop a vocal sample. Here we go! This can be really cool when you want to create some rhythmic effects in your mixes. And a top tip here, try using it with a little bit of echo to add some extra seasoning. Using the crossfader to blend tracks hasn't been cool since about 1998. In fact, mine was so underused, the dust underneath it had become sentient. But even if you can't scratch, the crossfader is still worth paying attention to. It generally has a much smoother action than the channel faders, and that makes it perfect for creating quick rhythmic effects. Let's take a look at the crossfader curve in preferences. Go to controller, mixer, and here you should see crossfader curve. The curve shows how fast the crossfader brings in the sound from the other deck when you move it. By default this is set in the middle which is a fairly smooth curve. Moving the crossfader will make the incoming track louder and the outgoing track quieter gradually. But we can have a lot more fun making the sound cut in instantly. To do that, move the curve all the way to the right with the icon that looks like Pi doing the splits. Make sure you assign your decks to each side of the crossfader. To do that set channel 1 to side A and then set channel 2 to side B. Now when we move the crossfader slightly, the volume of deck 1 will immediately be increased to maximum. While we're talking about faders, you can also customise the curve of the channel faders. They can also be found in controller and mixer. The default is a linear curve. This is a gradual increase in volume across the length of the fader. Another option is exponential. This starts off quiet for most of the length of the fader and then ramps up the volume fast at the end. The one I usually use is logarithmic. This gets the track up to about 70% of volume fairly quickly and then gradually raises it to 100% along the rest of the fader. I like this because I can get a tune in fast without having to move the fader too much and then gradually blend it in towards the drop. Play around with these and see which one fits your mixing style best. Release effects are effects that are applied to a channel to make it fade out or end smoothly. An example of when this is useful is when you want to drastically change the BPM of the track you're bringing in. You can use release effects to smoothly transition from the beginning of one section to the beginning of another at a different tempo. <laughs> You can find release effects in controller, then effect. For some reason, these options are called unit numbers. Unit one applies the effect to the entire master channel. This means when I use the echo out release effect and turn it on, the audio from both decks will be echoed out simultaneously until I let go. The default setting is unit two. This applies a release effect to whatever deck you have selected in the beat effects section of your mixer. In this case, deck two. This is really handy for mixing out a track without killing the music completely. Because activating release effects on my DDJ-1000 is a bit of a faff, I actually prefer mapping the Unit 2 effects to my performance pads instead. If you want to learn how I did this, I'll put a link in the description to a video I did on performance pads. Quantize is a function in Rekordbox and most DJ software that locks certain functions to the beat grid of the track. Chances are you already have it enabled. You can tell if the little cue is highlighted by the deck. Many controllers also have a button for it. Quantize is a really useful tool for DJs because it helps keep everything in time. Without it, setting accurate loops means you have to have really good timing, which I don't. Mm -hmm. 
As you can see, the loop is slightly out. But there can be occasions where it's too loose or too restrictive to DJ in the way that you want. Head into controller, then others. There are four different things you can control how Quantize works for. Hot cue, loops, reverse, and sequencer. For each, you can enable or disable it completely, or change the quantize value. Personally, the only two I really use are hot cue and loops. By default, loops are set to quantize to one beat. I leave that as it is because my timing needs all the help it can get. But hot cues is where I like to have a little more flexibility. If you just use hot cues to bookmark parts of a track, you may wish to increase this to one from the default of a quarter beat so they lock nicely to the grid. You can disable quantize on hot cues by changing this dropdown from enabled to disable. Now, Quantize will be active for loop, reverse, and sequencer, but deactivated for hot cues. For example, if you use the hot cues for finger drumming or other tricks, having Quantize turned off can give you a lot more freedom. I use tagging, or my tag as Pioneer calls it, extensively to manage my music library. It helps me organize my music and create playlists quickly, which saves me loads of time. But every so often, I still play on CDJs. Despite being a core feature of Rekordbox, the support for my tag on CDJs is a bit ropey. They are available in the CDJ 2000 Nexus 2s and above, but the functionality is buried deeper than a mole's underground mansion, and older CDJs don't have it at all. One workaround for this is to get Rekordbox to add your my tag information to the comments field of your music. Tag to activate this feature, go to Advanced, then Browse, and at the top you'll see My Tag and an option to add it to the comments. Activate this checkbox. Record box will moan, just click OK, and wait for a while. Now, if you add the comments field in Record Box by right clicking on the column headings and choosing Comments, you'll see all the tracks that have got tags against them have had metadata added to that field. When you export your tracks to USB in preparation for playing on some CDJs, this metadata will be usable by them. There's one thing I hate more than the sound of children laughing, and that's unnecessary things in my record box sidebar. The last thing you need when mixing is having to squint to find the music you want to play. There are many options selected by default, but most people only need two or three of them. If you don't want to burn needless eye calories, go into Preferences, View, then scroll down to where you see Layout. Uncheck all the services you don't use. This clears up your sidebar and gives you more room for playlists. The waveform is one of the most important things on your screen. It tells you how long intros are, where the drops happen, and even what frequencies are present at different points in your track. But by default, it looks like a denim jacket that's been through a food blender. You can change this by going to Preferences, View, scrolling down until you see Waveform, then under Color, you've got three options. The standard blue, RGB, and Freeband. The standard blue mode uses brightness to indicate frequencies. RGB mode maps the frequencies in your music to a color spectrum. Personally, I like to use the free band mode. I say like, it looks like Willy Wonka had an accident in a punnet of blueberries. I go into all this in a lot more detail in my video about reading waveforms. Wanna guess where I add the link? Up my arm. Greetings, Percy Flange here. If you've been enjoying this recording box video, perchance you might also be interested in my newsletter. It contains not only monthly tips relating to recording box, but also other salient tips that will help augment your skills as a discotheque jockey. Described by some of our readers as adequate, mildly beneficial, I don't remember signing up for this. The link to subscribe can be located directly beneath this audio-visual presentation. Onwards with the tips. Jasper, come on. If you only change one setting after watching this video, this is it. We've all been there. The music's playing. You're browsing for the next track. You press load. Horror. We've loaded it to the playing deck like an absolute muppet. The vibes die faster than a pleasure toy with a flat battery. You walk home in shame and break up with your partner. Or head into preferences, controller, deck, and choose lock. Now, like some kind of MP3 dictator, Rekordbox won't let you load a track unless the deck is stopped. You're welcome. Do you know what keys match harmonically with A flat minor? How about D major 6? Me either. Let's try something easier. Do you know the difference between 1 and 2? It's 1. Unless you have a good knowledge of music theory, it can be hard to know what keys go with what other keys. And more importantly, what tunes would sound good with it. Fortunately, there's a way to swap the display of all your keys to something called the Camelot key system. This turns musical keys into a series of numbers and letters. This makes it much easier to know what tracks are likely to sound good with what other tracks simply by counting. To turn this on, go to Preferences, View, and then Key Display Format. 
Change this from classic to alphanumeric. While we're here, let's go to analysis and make sure key is selected under the track analysis setting. This will make sure Rekordbox will analyze the key of your tracks as well as the BPM. Close preferences and make sure that the key column is visible by right clicking on the column headings and choosing key. You'll now see your tracks in the Camelot format instead of traditional music keys. Screw you Mozart. I'm not going to go into the ins and outs of harmonic mixing in this video, but there's another amazing record box feature that will help you select tracks that sound good together. Check out this video next where I tell you about a little known record box feature that will help your transition sound smoother than a portion and ice rink made of lube.